anything a human has done, you can do it too. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. It's Eileen. So since we launched our community discord, we got a request to bring on real Lavi loves, non-influencers who can show us what it looks like to create your dream life, messiness and all. Today, our first guest in this community series will tell us about her journey as a music composer for film and video games, dealing with imposter syndrome and finding her confidence as a woman in a male-dominated industry. I'm excited to introduce Samantha. Vandersloos. Samantha is a New Zealand-born Australian music composer for various media, including video games, films, TV, podcasts, and animation. She has worked in the music department for films including Star Wars 9, Toy Story 4, and Avengers Endgame. Her love for games led her down the path of becoming a lead composer in the gaming industry. And yes, this is her music playing in the background. Before we get started, I want to let you know that I'll be hosting a free live event on YouTube on March 21st. It'll be the new moon in Aries and the astrological new year as the first day of spring. So I'll be hosting a new moon ritual event that includes guided meditation, journaling, and intention setting. This will kick off a new community program we're launching called the Dream Life Club. To RSVP, go to lavendaire.com slash new moon. All right, here is Samantha Vandersloos. Hello, Sam. Welcome to the podcast. How are you feeling today? Hi, Eileen. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, I'm so excited to get to know you because you have such a cool background. Ever since you introduced yourself on Discord, I was like, wow, she is so cool. (laughs) (laughs) Like a music composer, I listened to your music immediately and I was just like very enamored because I, I also used to do music. And so I really admire people who who work in this field. You're I love the stuff that you've worked on. Um, so tell us about your background and how you became a music composer. Yeah, well, I started music in high school. And at that point, um, I felt like I was late to the game because you always hear about people like starting when they're five years old, when they're really young. You know, my parents made me do lessons and all that stuff. But um, at high school is not late, by the way. <laughs> so I started no, in high school. I started um, doing the drums because I was going through my like, you know, 14 year old kind of like goth phase. Yeah. <laughs> so I and was to like, be I clear, be... where did you grow up? Oh, in Australia. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I was born in New Zealand, but raised in Australia. So I went okay. to high school in Australia and I started with the drums and percussion and I just loved doing it. I joined the band. Um, we did like a jazz band. It was really fun. And then I started pursuing other instruments like the piano and uh, the violin as well. Um, And I was just like so interested in all these um, instruments. And I was thinking, oh, I'd love to be like um, a classical pianist, like a performer. And so that's what I was aiming for. I didn't even know composer was a job at the time because you don't really hear about it much. So my last year in high school, my teacher... He, he's an awesome teacher. I had a really supportive teacher. He introduced me to composing and he's like, you should give this a go. And um, the assignment was we had to write music for like a short um, film clip. And I'm like, okay, oh my God, this is what, how do I, like, I had no idea how to do this. <laughs> so he introduced me to like, you know, working with a computer. Um, you work with like a digital audio workstation, um, something like Pro Tools or Logic, um, what they use in like recording studios. And yeah, I had to go at that. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. I, what I love this. I love this more than performing. So um, we went from there. And like I said, my teacher was really supportive at the time. So, I mean, My compositions were awful (laughs) back in high school, but he loved them and he encouraged me and he's like, you should show people this. I was like, okay. (laughs) And then um, eventually I told myself, I want to go to school, like college for music and pursue composition so I can learn more about this and try to write music for media, like film and TV. Um, I I wasn't at the time even thinking of video games, which is where I'm currently at now. So I went to school for film and TV. And then there was like a huge pivot after college. 
I would be working on a lot of film projects and it's, it's really tough getting into the industry, getting your foot in. And um, I'd be working with a lot of like indie filmmakers and stuff, which was great. Um, but the projects, um, you know, sometimes the pay wasn't good and the projects made me burn out because you would be doing so much work for such little pay. And I was like, I, I'm kind of like, falling out of love with this and I, I'm starting to like not enjoy myself anymore and I remember there was a period of time um it was like for five years but when I was 23 up until like 27 I like just stopped music I, I wouldn't even open my program or go to the piano because it gave me such negative feelings wow because of burnout yes because of mm -hmm. burnout and I was just like, it, like, oh my gosh, what do I do? And at the time, I mean, I've always had a hobby as playing games. Ever since I was a really young kid, like five years old, my dad introduced me to playing games. And then I had an older brother and we would play together. And um, I just was playing a lot of games. And I was like, I really enjoy, like, this is what makes me happy. Why don't I try to uh like work in the game industry as a music as a music composer and um yeah it, it kind of went from there okay so during that period of time where you said you didn't like want to touch a piano or open your program were you still working in the industry or I was yeah okay. so I work yeah um so you're I saying for yourself like you didn't you weren't yes. motivated oh yes I see. yeah so motivated as like a freelancer because I have a day job where I work in the music department for many films um not as a lead composer but as just like part of the music team um, I was just doing that and then just coming home tired, wouldn't work on my, you know, my freelance side business, I guess you could say. Yeah. Yeah. And then that transition to video games, how, how was that? Was it easy for you to like move into a different industry? It was so different because, um, I didn't know anything about like the game industry. I didn't know anyone in the game industry. And so I'm like, how do I do this? And I realized a lot of game developers um, and people in the industry, they're very much remote all over the world, whereas film industry is very heavily um, located in Los Angeles, which is where I used to be before I moved out, out of state. So they were very remote. They were on social media, easily accessible via just you know direct messaging and stuff like that. And I also loved that it was remote because at the time, um, you know, the rent in Los Angeles was just skyrocketing and I couldn't, it, like, it was hard to live there for me. And so I had to move out and find a better place um, that was more affordable. And just gaming kind of fell into place because it was like I could message anyone all over the world. I mean, I'm working with a team in Indonesia right now. And I don't have to be in Indonesia. I'm here in the US. Yeah. And um, it's so diverse. And also the game community is closer to like my age as well. Um, whereas like in the past, I would work with like film directors or like very intimidating older people, <laughs> <laughs> like from another generation. <laughs> and so it was like, you know, this is how it is. Um, sometimes it can be a very toxic industry yeah. as well. I mean, that's probably er anywhere, but, um, no, but the film industry does have like a lot of like archaic, like tradition and it's, it is older in a sense. Yeah. Like it's yeah, hard to break in cause everyone's still, yes. yeah. <laughs> it's very cutthroat. Yeah. And I, I didn't like that. I wanted to protect my peace and I wanted to have better, better uh, mental health about it. And just going into the gaming industry, talking to devs who are like, you know, 30 years old around my age. Um, it was just, we had a lot in common. We became friends and that's important when networking. Um, so it, it was really natural for me and it made me so much happier mentally. I love that for you. So now is all your work basically remote and in video games or do you still split time between like film and video games music? Yeah. So currently what I'm doing with film, it's I'm working with a company, like I said, with um, just the music team and they're based in LA, but I can do that remotely. So um, where I am now, I'm in Eastern time zone in the US. So 
I start later in the morning, like around 11 o'clock with that company, which gives me like all this time in the morning to work on my freelancer stuff, which I love. It has helped so much. (laughs) Um, Instead of like, you know, working right away at your day job and then hoping you don't feel tired by the end of the day. Um, But yeah, so um, everything that I do is remote now. It's really great. Let's take a break for our sponsor. This show is brought to you by BetterHelp. Getting to know yourself is a lifelong process. We have so many layers to uncover, and even if you think you've dealt with everything, something new might trigger you and reveal a wound or pattern in yourself that you didn't realize was still there. Healing is a journey, and therapy is all about deepening your awareness and understanding of yourself. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. Online therapy has been a helpful tool for me to talk through my past and my emotions, to recognize my limiting beliefs and patterns that I need to heal from. BetterHelp therapy is entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule, not to mention more affordable than in-person therapy. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash TLL today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash T-L-L. I'm curious about the workflow of working, doing music remote. Like, is it, are, are you always like working in isolation or how often do you have to collaborate? Is, is everything easily done online now? <laughs> <laughs> That's a loaded question. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's easy to isolate myself and just, you know, go about my work um, because I'm the lead composer in these game projects. Um, But then there's other people in the audio team, like sound designers, who create um, the sounds that you hear in the video games. So, like, if you're thinking about Mario, every time you uh, collect the coin, ba-ding! So that's one of the sound effects. Um, So I don't do that. I just do the music. So Mm -hmm. we've got, like, sound designers on board, and I need to collaborate with them. And um, the special software systems in place to help the collaboration process go easier and make sure you don't replace each other's work and stuff like that. And then sometimes I'll hire musicians to play an instrument to record. Recently, I hired a vocalist for a session and she's in Germany. And so, and she has her own remote recording set um, studio set up. Um, and I mean, she's worked on like every uh, game. She's worked on many like big games as well as indie games. Um, so she's always in work and people always hire her and, um, yeah, just, there's a lot of things remote nowadays. That's so awesome. Um, can you tell us some of your favorite projects that you've worked on? Yes. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm currently working on a game called Cloudscape and it's kind of like you play as this little like cloud character (laughs) and you're on this island trying to survive and it's like a farming simulator it's kind of like a cross between stardew valley and zelda and i love working on it because um the variety of music needed is like you know um he's asking for seasonal music so i have to write some winter theme Mm -hmm. music and then some summer theme music, and it's just so much fun. And then also combat music because there's a bit of combat in the game. And oh my wow. gosh, that was a blast! Wow. <laughs> like boss music, it's very yeah. intense. Yeah, oh, that's so um, cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so much fun. Oh my gosh! And in games like these, I should say, um, it's very different to film because when you uh, work on a film as a composer, you're pretty much like the last person in. Um, you know, joining the team um, because it's post-production. And so you'll usually get like three months to work on it. And that's such a short time. And you don't know the collaboration beforehand and you're just meeting new people at that time. So everyone's become a family and then you join kind of thing. But in the game world, they hire the composer like really early. So you work with them for years. Um, A lot of game projects take like, you know, at least two years to make, if not more. Um, And then in a film, it's like your three-month contract as a musician. That's what you have to do for three months. But with games, I feel like you can have multiple projects happening because um, 
there like over a few years it's like oh well I can do this and this and this and this so I am working on multiple game projects yeah that's so cool and how big are these the music team in the games is are you creating everything or do you like how does that look like yeah so um I am just the composer so I just do the music and I also am able to implement the music in the game Um, And this is a very new thing I had to learn that's very different from films where um, say you have a character, you're playing this um, character and uh, the character is walking and then it goes into combat um, and then you start losing health. So what needs to happen is you have like your ambient music, whatever you're doing, you're walking. And then as you initiate combat, the combat music comes in Mm -hmm. and then as you start losing health, something else might happen, like a heartbeat to like tell the player that, you know, your health is low. Um, So it needs, it's very interactive and yeah, we use programs like middleware to help implement um, the music into the middleware software that goes into the game engine to respond to what the player is doing. So it yeah, it's nothing like what I've learned in in film. Before. And you also have to be able to make all those different songs connect seamlessly, yeah. right? And then yes, yeah, yep. that's so interesting. Yeah, because you you don't know how long a player will take going from like A to B. Someone might take like thirty seconds to like you know run through the village until they reach the beach, and then the music changes. But someone might like you know they might leave the couch or the keyboard or whatever and then the character's just staying there well you have to make sure the music loops without the audience (laughs) knowing that it's looping and not getting like too old or anything like that yeah yeah oh that's so fascinating um okay before we get deeper into your career and that path um I also do want to ask you how did you discover Lavender let's talk about I don't know. I'm I'm curious about your story. Like what role has Lavender played in your life? One of my favorite things to look up on YouTube is just like self-growth and um, developing yourself as a person and bettering yourself. And I don't remember if your channel was a recommendation by the algorithm or if it just came up when I did a search or whatever, but I definitely found you over YouTube. And um, I was just watching like all the videos. I was like, oh my God, this is so handy. And I've learned so much from you. Um, Like one of the things is um, that I've learned from you recently is like getting over like imposter syndrome. You mentioned something like focus on your small wins. Like we tend to forget Mm -hmm. what we've already achieved in the past, no matter how small or big that might be. And it really helped. Like I sat down one day and I like wrote down, okay, what have I achieved um, the past couple of years? And I was like, wow, I've like, this is pretty cool. Okay. (laughs) Um, So yeah, I, and I've been following you since, I don't remember the year. It must be like 2016, 2017. Oh my God, really? From that long ago? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so yeah, I've, I've watched your videos where you were also talking about, you know, you used to sing and you, yeah. you have been a musician in the past and yeah. And it's just, I, I really do enjoy your videos. Thank you. Oh, I love hearing when people discovered me back in the day. Cause that must mean yeah. like I was very obscure. <laughs> like, no, <laughs> you know what I mean? When the channel was a lot smaller. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing yeah. though. Um, yeah, let's talk about um, your career path because I, I know you mentioned you had a lot of challenges you had to go through, um, one of them being imposter syndrome. So tell us about that journey. How did you navigate that? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, it creeps up on you no matter how confident you become. Because, like, you know, I open my social media apps and I have friends who are doing amazing things like, uh, you know, composers working on like big projects or like recording something here and there and flying to London to record. I'm like, Oh my God. (laughs) And um, here I am, you know, in my little uh, home studio, like, Oh, is this like, am I a fraud? Um, So it's tough. I try not to compare myself to others. And again, I try to focus on like wins from the past I've learned that a good thing for me is if I do get like a feeling of like anxiety or jealousy from 
um, someone else, if I'm comparing myself to them, I, I try to turn that energy into like inspiration. So I'm feeling jealous for a reason, right? And that's probably because I want something or admire something about them. And so I should take that as inspiration, as fuel, as what I should or or I, I might do for myself. Like, oh, I should probably like focus on trying to do this as well. Or, oh, this is a good goal to achieve. I'll try to do that too kind of thing. Right. Like instead of feeling envious or jealous – because that's all it is, is telling us what we want. Like deep down, we want the same thing too. So instead of like the negative jealousy, it, it's just like, okay, let me try, let me go for that. <laughs> let me take action on that. Yeah. And there is also a thing where like you can, you know, you can mute people on social media if it's not protecting your peace. Like, because sometimes, you just have to balance it out. Like, okay, is, is this person worth following? Like, do they give me positive um, feedback or, um, but yeah. Yeah. Another thing that you mentioned was that your industry is really male dominated. So can you talk about your experience as a woman in this industry and how did you, you know, what's that journey like breaking in and finding success? Yeah. It's super intimidating. Um, as a woman, like people sometimes might not believe that you're on a certain level, like, oh, she can't write boss battle music. You know, that's a very masculine type of music to write, especially in the gaming world. Game is, uh, you know, it, there's a lot of men playing games. And so even just being as a, a woman and as woman gamer, it is, um, uh, it's so misogynistic because guys will call you out and be like, Oh, like, I bet you're not great at this game or whatever. And it, that can transfer to like music. And it's like, wait, the composer is a woman for this game. We're definitely rising. This year was the first year where the Grammys had a new uh, category and that was best score for video games. And yeah, we have been fighting for that for years. Like, please recognize that video game music is important. And the first Grammy went to a woman uh, wow. for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and so that was a huge point. Like, see, like there, there's women in this field um, and the women in the field are just like incredible at yeah. what they do. Yeah. I love that. And it's like, yeah, women can write any type of music, even if it's masculine boss music. Yeah. Too. It it's not just pretty gender. stuff. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they also, there's also stereotypes like, oh, you must be into like Animal Crossing then. You know, that's such a, that's such a girl game. <laughs> but, um, yeah, at the end of the day, we have to remember everyone's individuals um, and we like what we like. And I've also noticed like if there's scoring competitions, sometimes people will have a call for composers to submit like a piece in a competition. And it's pretty much like 90 percent of it, if not more, is all by men. Mm. Um, I feel like a lot of women are afraid or they don't feel as confident and they have that imposter syndrome I know I do I there was a video game competition earlier this month and I was like there's no way I'm going to apply for that because I don't feel like I'm ready yet or like I don't feel like I'm good enough yet uh, so it it's a constant battle. I'm still trying to overcome. Yeah. I feel like that feeling with women is across all industries. It's not just in gaming because women tend to, we tend to feel not as confident about our abilities. Like I think I heard it's like a, a man will apply for a job if he only has like 50% of the qualifications, but a woman feels like she has to qualify 100% to apply for the job. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I feel <laughs> when that. People yeah. who are less qualified than you are applying for these competitions right yeah and yeah. I <laughs> I actually learned um, about manifestation from like your community in the mm -hmm. discord and so I'm trying it this month for the first time and I'm nice. trying to <laughs> manifest um myself like you know going to a scoring stage where you would record live musicians a live orchestra and you know there's the big boys in the mixing booth and they're all watching you and you're conducting the music and I'm just trying to like okay I I, 
I want to get out of my comfort zone, even though it's intimidating as a woman and I'm just, you know, I want to try to get there. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. It, it's all about your self-belief. On, on that note, I'm curious, what is your longer term goal? Like you're working on so many amazing projects now. Is there something that you're trying to grow towards? I only pivoted to the game industry like less than two years ago. So I actually don't have any games released that I've worked on yet. We're still working on them. Um, and I'm just hoping to continue working on games and eventually um, leading to a triple A game, which means like a, a bigger game, like one of the games people may recognize, like let's see, Animal Crossing is triple A, um, World of Warcraft, something like that. Um, I would just love to work with a big studio like that. Uh, that would be a dream come true. <laughs> yeah. Are there people who are like famous video game composers that that you look up to? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, there's like Lena Rain. She's the composer for a game called Celeste. Um, and Gareth Coker, a composer for um, Ori and the Blind Forest. And oh my gosh, there's so many. And it's funny because a lot of these composers, they get their fame and recognition from just writing like an indie game music um so I know like I believe Ori and the Blind Forest was indie and now it's like quite a big game that many people know about um so really it, it's also a bit of luck like is is this game gonna do well and if it does do well then everyone gains from it kind of thing yeah. oh yeah yeah you just have to have like one lucky break <laughs> I think you're on the path you're already you're doing it <laughs> well thank you yeah and an important thing for me to remember is like um you know even if these don't go big or whatever the projects I am working on now like Cloudscape, Petted Island and Love Ghosty these ones are projects I absolutely love like they are very wholesome very cozy games um and I just like the the team I love working like it's some of the best people I've worked with in my life so it just makes me so much so much joy and happiness working for these um developers and studios um yeah. even though they're not a big game right. yet or if ever yeah right like the, the work is fulfilling on its own. Yes. Yeah. 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 And it's like the happiest I've been in my life, I would say. Aww, like, that's yeah, great. working on projects that I just love. Like, I think as a freelancer, if you love the projects you work on, then you've kind of already made it because uh, mm -hmm. I, I feel happy doing it. So that's yeah. really important. Yeah. So what tips do you have for people who are freelancing, whether it's like video games or, or something else in, in building that, I guess, that portfolio or getting, because it seems like you're getting so much work as a freelancer and you're on the right track. So how did you do it? Well, one would be to have a portfolio to sh ready to show people like, okay, here's my music I've combined over the years. Um, and also being very active on social media because that's where you'll find people. Because when all these game developers um, and maybe possibly more um, freelance work isn't just located in one location anymore, it's it's just all over the world and the opportunities become bigger because of that. Um, I think, you know, a bright side of COVID is because there was a push to remote work now as well. Yeah. How do you normally find your jobs? Like, or do they find you through social media? It's a bit of both. Yeah. So I would um, like find projects that look interesting and are early in development and ask if, if they have a composer on board. And if not, I would love to work for them. Um, and then other times um, they come to me and ask because they've seen the work I do, listen yeah. to my portfolio. Yeah. It's all about just being um, active on social media um, or if there's like, um, you know, a conference or something like that, um, going to those conferences in person is a great networking event. Those are really great tips. Like you seem like you know how to put yourself out there. Even like when I first saw your website, I was already amazed. Like just you putting your work out there and, and networking is like, it does so much. Yeah, it really does. And 
um, I mean, that's scary for everyone. Like, oh my gosh, I don't want to promote myself. Like, that's so shameless or mm. uh, well, shameful. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you don't do it, the answer will always be no. Mm. But if you ask, it might be a yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and the thing to achieving a dream in this scope, like you know, oh, I want to be a recognized composer, is to just keep going. Um, I'm a very firm believer in if you just keep going and just, you know, keep enjoying your work and taking work on that you want to do, eventually you'll find what you're looking for. Um, yeah, that that's what I believe. I love that so much. Okay. So I want to also get into like your process of composing. Like how do you find inspiration? What does it look like when you're writing music? It's very messy. <laughs> so I find um, the best ways to get ideas is to sing into like the voice memos in my phone app um, because then it's very freeing. Whereas if I'm playing on an instrument, like my instrument is the piano, I might, uh, you know, noodle around, but then not hit the right notes I want. Whereas singing, you can like sing as exactly as how you picture it in your mind and then try to transfer it to an instrument. But again, yeah, another way is to play on the piano, play different chords, and also very important, listen to references that you like, whether it's video games or um, films or even um, music from years ago, like from the Romantic period, classical period. Um, just keep listening to music and find out why you like it. Analyze that kind of music and go like, oh, that's a really good technique. I should try that for my own piece and see how it goes kind of thing. Yeah. That's so amazing. And then, I mean, tell me more about, you know how you have to go write music for different themes? Like, oh, this is a winter song. This is a summer song. So like, how do you even put that into music? Is it just in your mind and you just let it flow? Well, I'm sure if I were to say, okay, try to think of a winter song in your head right now there's probably going to be sleigh bells in it, right? <laughs> so like, um, there's like a, you know, little toolbox of techniques we can use. So like, okay, get the sleigh bells out for, for winter time. Um, definitely different instruments kind of like, you know, inspired uh, different like seasons and stuff. So like with summer, there's um, steel drums and hand drums, um, kalimbas and all that kind of stuff. So it comes down to ensemble as well. You don't have to just use the same instruments every time, like the same orchestra. Um, you can like uh, mix it up and then get your acoustic guitar with your bossa nova summer stuff. Yeah. And is all this music essentially using digital instruments or do you actually record yourself playing or live instruments at all? I use a lot of digital instruments. Um through like music sample libraries that I have on my computer. And as I play them onto my MIDI keyboard, they'll play like if I have a trumpet loaded, it will play as I play it on the piano, if that makes sense. Um, but I also do have live instruments come on, especially soloists, like for Petit Island, it's a big game with lots of like summer beachy music. And so I had an acoustic guitar player come on board and he recorded um, some notes for me and then I had a vocalist come on for another session so um, yeah adding just like you know a couple of live instruments really enhances um, the mock-up of of the piece yeah and then what's the timeline of these projects like how long does it take to complete a song or like how many songs goes into a typical game yeah well that depends on like how big the game is so right. Cloudscape is probably one of my bigger games um, I think so far we've got around 40 to 60 tracks. I'll okay. have to <laughs> double check. Yeah, no, that's, it's good to know. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of a lot. So um, minimum, that's like, I think like, you know, an hour and a half of music. Mm. And um, yeah, and, and with um, some other games, it might be shorter content. Like, oh, it's just, you know, meant to be played over um, six hours and then you complete it, then and say there's only like 10 tracks for that. Like I said, game projects last years, like we're working years on them with the team. 
And so that can always be changing and adding. Um, I, I actually really like that dynamic because sometimes I'll be writing a track and then a year or two later, I listen back to it and I go, oh, I can improve that because my skills have improved, like my oh, nice. mixing and stuff. So I can yeah. just go back to it and edit it and then like resend that file. So that's kind of nice as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amazing. Um, okay, so moving on, I'm curious, like, what would you tell your younger self who, you know, was starting out and didn't feel confident in in herself? And, you know, just imagine yourself at the beginning of this career. What would you say? Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's still me. <laughs> like I'm still <laughs> trying to get confident. <laughs> right. But no, um, I would tell my younger self that Every skill is learnable. So you would, uh, you know, go into something like music and then you discover like, oh, I have to learn this that I don't know anything about or I have to learn this. And it's very overwhelming. But really, if you just put a little bit of time into learning something every day, you'll eventually learn it and you'll get that confidence and that self-esteem boost. Um, Like, Actually, my New Year's resolution this year is to spend every day learning something for one hour related to my career. And I've already learned like, oh my gosh, so much, like so much mixing tips um, and some orchestration techniques. And um, that has just made me so much more confident and happy as well. And it stopped, you know, the comparisons with others too, because even though like, oh, this person sounds so much better than me or, (laughs) but I believe I can get there. I mean, anything a human has done, you can do it too, right? It, if a human has done it, then you can do it as well. Yeah, it's it's helpful to like take it a day at a time. I love that you're like learning an hour a day because when you look at someone else who's so far ahead, you're like, oh my God, it, it's such a big leap that it, it feels impossible. But if you just, you know, break it down step by step, it's everything's possible. You just need the time and the effort. Yeah, definitely. It's about the effort you put in, for sure. In terms of your learning, are you just finding things through YouTube or like, what are you, where are you learning? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So the internet is amazing. So I am learning a lot through YouTube. And then the more that you look through YouTube about like tutorials, about a music thing, um, it will recommend you other things. um, tutorials from other people and so that's great so I've like already subscribed to like you know 10 more people (laughs) like oh wow this is great um so yeah YouTube is a huge one for learning and then there's like manuals to like the software you own Mm. um which is really good to know in terms of workflow like I've learned so many things about my software that I didn't know before I was like this makes it so much easier and more fun. I recently learned, like, I use Cubase as my digital audio workstation, and um, you can color code things to make it organized and stuff. And I thought there was only, like, eight default colors, but then I learned you can go into, like, project settings and then change it to, like, 32 different colors. So I've just wow. made it, like, all so cute colors. <laughs> <laughs> I love it's it. Such a, I love yeah, to it's see, like, what thing. your workstation looks like. It's, like, all Organized. Oh yeah, I could send you a screenshot if yeah. you're interested. But yeah, I would love that. <laughs> but, I will include it in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like all these tutorials I see, um, again, it's it's by a lot of men, which, which you know, <laughs> no shade, <laughs> because I'm learning for them from them. Um, but they have all those like you know, just like blue and red and green and it's like I want to make mine like more aesthetic I don't know because like <laughs> I'm your sure there's so many other people who think like you too <laughs> yeah that your environment and it, even the software you work on it should feel inspiring to you yeah and so like those colors are very ins- it makes me want to work in it yeah <laughs> work it's on like my when project. people yeah. people deck out like aesthetic notion layouts and it's like yeah it's so cute <laughs> And if yeah. no one's teaching this, like no, if there's no tutorials on it, you should, you should give tutorials on oh, this. Just like on colors. And stuff. Right. <laughs> that's a good idea. Right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, anyway, that's a really good tip for any creative who uses any software. Cause there, even with like Adobe programs, there's like endless amounts of things to learn. And most people don't don't devote the time to learn those details. But I, I think it's amazing that you're putting the time to do that. 
Yeah, and like one hour is what, like eight uh, percent of our day or something like that. I don't know. Don't, don't quote me on that, but like it's a it's a small amount is what I'm getting at, and it can be doable uh, to to find one hour or even thirty minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I also want to ask you about um, creating like a, a balance in your life because you mentioned you burnt out before doing music. So. Are there things that you're doing differently now to ensure that you don't burn out? Yeah. So again, with like the game dynamic, because it's over years to work on, um, it's not like so high priority sometimes. Um, And I actually find I work better without a set deadline, which is very like, you know, I know a lot of people where it's like, I need a deadline to make sure I do it. But my thought process is, well, as long as I wake up and work a little bit on my projects um, before my day job, then I know I'm I'm getting there um, and I'm not procrastinating. So it's been better without a hard set deadline because some of these games, they don't know when they're going to release yet. I have a feeling one of my games will release next year. So that's, you know, kind of a deadline. But a year is is long enough for me to... Um, yeah, get get a good chunk of work done. Yeah. So yeah, I think one of those things is it's not so like quick because like in the past, film directors would need deliverables really quickly. Um, you'd have to turn around, do all nighters, and oh my gosh, it can be really bad for your health and your mental health. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is like a, also a lesson on you know some people work well with deadlines and then some people don't work well well with deadlines. So you have to learn, understand yourself, and and do what works for you. Yeah, that's something I've learned about myself because I thought like deadlines was always the key. Like okay, like I have something to work towards, but it's like oh actually I don't really need a deadline, and I'm happier working that way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you deal with like, um, lack of motivation and inspiration sometimes, or do you find yourself procrastinating? Cause I think the problem with not having deadlines is like, you can procrastinate forever. <laughs> I am actually not a procrastinator. I'm very lucky. <laughs> I'm very lucky. I'm not. Um, but the thing that keeps me going, um, you know, I mean, we all feel like that sometimes. So the thing that keeps me going, the motivation is um, sometimes I'll like go on the Lavender Discord and I'll read like what people are grateful for or um, what they're proud of for that day. And just hearing something like someone would write, I'm proud of exercising today. I'm proud that I got up early. I'm proud that I had a healthy breakfast. Like just hearing that, I'm like, that's so like motivating and yeah. I'm going to go do something that I'm proud of as well. Oh my God, I love that. Oh. Yeah, so, oh my gosh, I check the Lavender Discord like every day, like uh, mornings and night <gasps> and to try to get like me motivated for my own stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, I'm so happy to hear that it, it's working. <laughs> Oh yeah. I don't think I'm the only one too. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. No, that's so good to hear. And and for listeners who aren't in our discord, yeah, definitely join the discord. It's free, but we have all these channels for like sharing like your gratitude, your self-love, your wins. And I I just love the vibes in there. Like the people are so sweet and amazing. Yeah. And everyone lifts each other up um, and are so supportive. Um, It's so great. And actually I want to say something about like you know, being supportive. Um, Going back to when you're feeling like comparing yourself to others or you're jealous of others, I like to think of, okay, Sam, when was the last time you did something that you were proud of and you had the support and love from everyone and your friends and that made you feel so good? And I want to share that same support and love with other people and, and, you know, the person you're jealous of they also deserve that as well. And it's so just, it's much better to just encourage and uplift others. Yeah. I love that. Thanks for sharing. Um, Okay. Let's talk about your dream life. Uh, How would you just, what is your definition of your dream life? I think what I'm doing now, but amplified a bit. So (laughs) uh, because like I said, I am working um, on my projects and that has made me like the happiest I've ever been. Like I I love the projects I'm working on. And so if I can continue doing that um, and then also try to get to that triple A game one day, that would 
really be my dream life and even mm-hmm. like you know maybe recognized yeah. <laughs> um yeah whether I don't know whether that's in the form of an award or just a nomination or <laughs> that would be kind of cool I mean that's such a big dream no but it's so possible for you I it's yeah it's totally it, it's you're on the way <laughs> you're doing it well, thanks. Yeah. And I feel like um, my life is balanced because of that. Um, well, actually, I don't really believe like in a full balance of a life circle kind of thing, because you may need to sacrifice things to make you happy. So for instance, I'm a career person. And so that might sacrifice, um, you know, a family time just a little bit. Um, and so the I guess like the angular <laughs> balance I have works for me and, and for the people around me, my family, they know like I work in, um, you know, certain hours and then I'll hang out with them or whatever. So yeah, just, I guess continuing what I'm doing because it makes me happy. So I must be doing something right. Yeah. I love that. I, I love that you pointed that out because life doesn't have to be perfectly balanced all the time. And if you love your career and you spend more time doing it, that I think that's totally okay. And it's also a reminder that it's sometimes our life is unbalanced for a certain timeline. Like sometimes like this, it may be this 10 years, you're like all focused on career. And then maybe after that, you like shift things a little bit, right? So I, I just love, yeah, that life doesn't have to look perfect in one person's eyes like it everybody has their own definition of what their dream life is yeah and like yeah. in your workbook um you know the artist of life workbook you have yeah. that circle where you color in like yeah mine is uh, quite angular yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> my okay. career is quite up there like but if oh, you're yeah, happy, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, I love that my final question for you would be what is one message that you'd like to leave our audience with today I think measure yourself by your efforts and not your achievements. So um, our goals and our dreams can fall flat, but your effort may have been there and that alone helped you to grow. Amazing. I love that. And I, I can see the effort that you've been putting in. It's I know that you you talk about wanting some awards and recognition, but it's like that's nice, but what's more important is like the work that you're doing. And the fact that you're you're working at it every single day. Yeah, definitely. Like, um, I guess I heard somewhere, like, you know, I was doing like a vision board workshop and the woman presenting was like, okay, yeah, you can have your realistic goals that you know are achievable and measurable for you. But then why not put something like really huge? So like, I'm trying to tell myself like, okay, you know, get nominated for an award. <laughs> That is really, really huge. But like I said, like, I'm just totally happy working on the projects I'm working on. I love that. All right, Sam, um, where can we find you online? Okay, so I have a website. Um, It's a bit of a mouthful. It is samanthavandersloos.com. And you can also find me on Twitter at Sam underscore Vandersloos. And we'll have those links down below in the show notes. Everybody definitely check out Samantha Vandersloos. <laughs> um, I am so grateful that you came today. Like I really, like once, I, I already said this to you, but once I saw you in the Discord, I like, I'm like, oh, I want to talk to her. <laughs> She's so cool. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. You're so, so nice. You. I- yeah. Thank you for sharing your story and being yeah. a part of our community. I, I'm here to support you all the way. I can't wait thank until you so you're much. like a big, <laughs> big time triple a video game composer (laughs) thanks eileen for this award yes (laughs) you've gotten the lavender lavender award (laughs) yes (laughs) i thought it'd be fun to end this interview with one of samantha's favorite pieces so please enjoy her song romance in peace from one of her game projects called love ghosty 